So in the contender bracket, not much has really changed. NYCFC is still at the top. Montreal is catching up with them a little bit now. Got a newcomer in Cincinnati that's just continuing to fight. You know, Cincinnati's a team that's going to upset uh, a top team in the playoffs. You know, Cincinnati and Columbus, the Ohio boys, those are two clubs that if you're Philly, NYCFC, or Montreal, those are two clubs that you don't want to face in the first round of the playoffs or your first game of the playoffs. Like if you're a team like Philly and you're coming off a bye week, you don't want to face Cincy or Columbus in the playoffs because Columbus is getting hot at the right time. And I'm going to talk about them on a more about them when I talk about the achievers. Cincy, they have been a team that that has consistently stayed above the playoff line for a while now. And there's been some games, some controversial games they've been part of, they've been part of, but they have fought through adversity. This is why I believe Cincy is one of the teams that's going to upset one of the top three teams in the playoffs. If Cincy's not a top three seed come the MLS playoffs, I believe Cincy's going to upset somebody, whether it's Philly, whether it's NYCFC, whether it's Montreal, or whether it's the New York Red Bulls. Cincy is going to upset somebody, similar to how NYCFC upset New England as they came off their bye week in the playoffs last year. So Cincy's a team that we all got to start paying attention to, and we have to start taking them serious because Cincy is for real. And they've been for real all season long. NYCFC, you know, it's one thing to lose your star coach in the middle of the season. But it's another thing to lose your star coach and star player in the middle of the season. And Abu Dubai City Football Group, this is something that you can't let happen ever again. NYCFC is one of those teams that the MLS needs to be great. Because you being the fourth popular league in this country, or if college football is considered a professional sport, MLS, you're really the fifth most popular league in America. So for you, population, market, it matters more for you. So you need teams that's in the big markets, the New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Atlanta. You need teams in those four big markets to perform well. So I don't know. It's like ever since Tatsy left, it's like a player has not really stepped up to really be that guy on offense. You know, when um, Ronnie Dyla left, the team struggled a little bit, but then Nick Cushion, he was eventually able to get it together. So now the new challenge is finding the guy on offense, somebody who wants to be the guy, someone who wants to be the man, someone who wants to be the face of NYC FC. Because, look, in the MLS in America, soccer, offense, offense, wins championship points wins championships if you don't have a great offensive player people are not going to watch your team play and that's just the reality i don't care how it's done in europe this is not europe i'm talking about sports in america if you don't have a great offensive guy if you don't have a superstar on offense people are not going to want to see you play so somebody on that NYCFC offense has to step up and decide to be the man. I thought it was going to be Taos Magno, but recently it, it, it's, it's not looking like he wants to be the man. So somebody 
has to step up and say, I'm going to be the man. I'm going to be the new star in New York City. I'm going to be the guy who scores. Because look, NYCFC. Gridiron football season is back. And the fact that you don't have any stars. like New, New Yorkers, they barely support soccer to begin with. And the thing that helped you, NYCFC, you had a star in Tati Castellanos. And you had a star coach in Ronnie Dyla. Both of them are gone. So you you really got to. Nick Cushion, he's getting it. He got he got it together. And, you know, Nick, Nick Cushion looked like he's getting ready to be that guy for NYCFC for multiple years. So now you got you got to find that guy on offense. The good thing is NYCFC, you still have enough time. You've done well enough to. Keep yourself secured for a playoff spot heading into decision day. So by the time decision day comes in YCFC, you need to have that offensive guy established. This is why I kind of wonder why you didn't really make any moves during the summer transfer window. So we can have Tati's replacement. I don't like teams in big markets remaining stagnant if this if if you were if, if you were salt lake city or minnesota or charlotte or or i i wouldn't really care about you not making any moves but you nycfc you along with atlanta getting ready to be the eastern face of the mls you should have made some kind of move but you want to stay in house so Somebody in house is going to have to step up. Whether it's Tiles Magno or somebody. But you have enough time to get it right. So that's what we're looking for. Who's going to take over as the new Tati Castellanos?